you could tell my balance was off and everything, you know what I mean? And okay, that mean they was doing that. Because you saw me later on doing work that was, uh, you know, I was in there painting every day and doing stuff. Then they can hit you again. So here's the point and here's the ideas behind what I'm talking about. I know that we got a lot of things planned. Just simple things like this. So I'm going to make sure this is done. You know, I don't feel like it physically, but when this stuff, this morning is when it hit clean. And so I start writing my little pieces on it. And, and so now I'm going to give you a some ideas. But first I want everybody to remember, you can remember that in physical fitness and all of that, and in endurance, mine is a little bit different than other people's. Example, I was 73 years old when the people was beating me upside the head. And they was beating me upside the head. They wasn't playing. They were beating me upside the head. So after a couple of whacks, which the one whack, 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 then I'm conscious I'm under attack. But I'm still getting whacked heavily upside the head with them things that make a noise when you twist it. That's what uh, Mukhtar did. All this is happening fast. Twist, clank, clank, and then while he's doing his attack, uh, uh, Khadijah that pulled hers out and going into their thing. And these things are metal. You can tell they're metal because remember, that was pieces of flesh sticking up on, the, on my head. Is that true? It was. No, that's true, yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it was stuff yeah. sticking up. In other words, they was knocking pieces of flesh out of my head. So it wasn't no act, it wasn't no they got stumbled into their thing, like the white man said about Rodney King. Oh, you, your head collided with my club. And, and the court didn't say, man, that's a lie. They just acted like the police were saying, yeah. Rodney King was just cruising along, and his head collided with the billy club of the white police. That's what happened to him. You know, he didn't hit him. He just, his billy club collided with his head. Anyway. So, in my case, if I'm sitting there, and when you get older, you can't just stand straight up, because you're older. When you're younger, you can stand straight up with another body on top of you. So I pull this body on top of me. And if anybody else, we'll make them show the video, because I'm sure it's on video. Because the whole bunch of this video, just like they was videoing, uh, me this morning, like they video everything, and I'm going to get to that, what the purpose of all that is. When all of that happened, and I pulled, I went to the hospital, the lady said, man, I, I've never seen anybody that happy when they have an assault like that, you know, anyway, those two black women. So I was able to pull them toward me because I wasn't in no shape to do nothing else. Not that I know anything about martial arts. That's the only thing I could do. Because I got options. Bam, what option? I, I just pulled him to me and that'll stop him. Now in the meantime, I did turn him toward the ground when we got to where I was getting on top of him. Then she started. And imagine my head is there and she 200 and something pounds, probably 300. And she has a clear space for her just to use all of your might and whack, whack. And I can see all, I can feel all this. Went to the hospital, da, 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 and they sent me something saying you were a victim of something or other so you could receive some counseling and some help and some money, you know. I didn't. Followed up, but that's what they said. 
They said, this guy here, you can fall under the victimization plan they got in these states now. But now remember, when that happened, I waited a whole month and a half before I drove back 3,000 miles. And I'm starting to feel a little bit of that in Colorado up on the Starbucks. And you know, you can't hold the coffee. You know what I mean? It's spilling. I'm spilling the coffee, and so I just dump it. Okay, but I get back here. Now, I stay here for a short period of time, and I drive back. Might as well be to California, because Arizona's next door. So I drive another. 2,500 miles or something like that, right? And I go through that program, and then I drive all the way back here. So that's 8,000 miles, 5,000 going to come to Arizona. And I'm showing the people in this program, this is what just happened to me, da, 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 and I need y'all's help. I didn't get no help from them. It's the same time they put Marzia Hashimi out there. Hashimi, Hashimi, to put her name out there. What about Musa? This stuff did not happen to me, and I'm showing them the pictures, and I'm not giving, getting no response from them. That means that they didn't change they, their platform, their program, as far as I am. And then they interject Marzia Hashimi, right? as a false flag to take any energy from me. And they did that because you ain't heard nothing else in my job. They did the little phony thing and then she back in Iran and ain't nothing happened. You ain't heard nothing about it. But all of that was designed for me. And I talked to her people, or what was our people, in Denver. And they didn't do nothing they were supposed to. Okay. So that means that whatever I am, I'm not a weakling. And you know, because that's three or four times what anybody else would do, the average person, right? First of all, they'd be laid out and that's it. I call it a day, that's it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm off work now for at least two months with all. You know with what I look like? That's enough time to take a, a brief absence or something like that, right? Anybody would do that. I didn't take none. I didn't take none. I didn't even want to go to the hospital. But my son was looking. You could tell, Dad, you got to go to the hospital. I'm not looking at myself. He's looking at me and saying, man, you got to go. I'm saying, I'm just thinking, I'm not looking at myself, right? Or I didn't have a little of blood running down my head. Ain't no big. That's the way I was thinking. You can hear it on the video. They, they said, you got to go. I'm a grown man. That's, in fact, that's what I said. I'm a grown man. I don't need to be going to no little hospital for just somebody a little lump upside the head. Anyway, the point I'm making is that I study this stuff all the time. I'm not up here just saying, yeah, and I don't have no background in what I'm saying because of most of us have seen and experienced some of that background. So now I'm going to go and with proper expectations of society. So with what's going on in the world, the, man, the woman asking for five minutes for her husband. Uh, the, in France, they won't take nothing because they think it's all a big uh, Lie and other countries. It's not just and here there. We want to inject Negroes. You don't know what they're giving that Negro old lady, because other niggas are saying, number one, think about it. Who's dying in this? African Americans, Latinos, and American Indians. Three to one. Some places, four to one, and always a minimum of two to one, us. That stuff 
looks, it don't look good to me. That, that don't look good. And then all of the stuff floating around when Bezos and all, or basically the big, few big white folks. <coughs> now imagine them. They want to make more money. Well, you have a, this antivirus, that's fine. We made enough money to give all our employees 80000 a piece, and it wouldn't make no difference. It's ridiculous. They still have more money than when they started. Whatever happened, it's a few of the people uh, get rich. What is the other thing? You want to affect climate change. Just say climate change. What they're thinking. When they think automation and when they think uh, artificial intelligence, they think of uh, machinery. And they think the human being is useless now. The human being, who needs them? We need a few thousand, maybe a few million. But the way they're thinking is, should we take this earth back to the Garden of Eden? Just get rid of the human beings, right? Not they, mama, or they children, but everybody else's. And you know, when you get up in that cloudy area, that's how people think. They think about what's beneficial. Oh, we got to have people work for us good, we'll have slavery. Forget about all that, because we need all their labor. But suppose you get to the level, go bump, 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 and then, oh, the machines now outproduce the human beings, right now. Less maintenance, no cost. You don't have to pay it nothing. You just buy the thing, and the last you put, put, put a couple of screws in it, a little oil every now and then, and it'll run for 50 years. Okay. This is how they're thinking now. They're not thinking like me and you. They're not thinking the world came and balanced. We want to put a balance back in. We have to get a, create a whole new system. Maybe cut down on the population a little bit. The earth can feel comfortable with uh, two billion people instead of uh, six, seven, eight billion people. So we'll have a graduated thing, and pretty soon uh, we won't have to build any more buildings because everybody will live downtown in Wilkins, Vernus, feudal spaces to stores. So you'll be able to walk out, walk down to your store, get your bicycle, and go to the store, or have it delivered. And we'll have big, beautiful parks. We'll take out every other street, right, downtown. We'll take that whole street, Broadway, big and wide. We'll make it a park, a long park, a five-mile park with trees and birds. And they can do that. If everybody, they don't build on no more ranches and no, only, you want to live in a, Bring all the people, the new people, or the people living in the old houses out here, bring them downtown and they live up there because people don't need to go downtown anymore like they did in the old days, right? To shop. They don't have to have, huh? To shop. To, to shop to do nothing. They don't have to do that. Not only that, but everybody work downtown. But in the new environment, think about it. You don't, nobody has to go downtown anymore. There's no such thing, because everybody can work at home. Therefore, pollution is gone. All the cars, who needs a car? Who needs a car? Because everybody's healthy. Everybody's walking and riding bicycles and breathing the fresh air from every other big street downtown. Right? One street is for transportation and walking or what have you. And every other street 
It's a big park. All long as it goes, it's a park. Right? Trees, fresh air, right? All of that in the park. Or full of uh, you got all kind of trees in there, fruit trees for birds, you got this, that, and other. And you can walk in that long park down here, down there, and all the greenery. They can do that. You'll have fresh air outside. And they don't need people to travel from out there to over there anymore. There's no need for these gas guzzles and SUVs running down there and filling up all the air, you see what I mean? That's the way we think, the easy solution. White folks, the big white folks don't think like that. We can cut out all the, uh, we can cut these folks down and uh, get rid of them. Remember, insane solutions. Get rid of them. Now they're not thinking about if they make smart learning machines. I was watching one program, they had this uh, uh, chess playing machine that played chess. The first time they lost, but it's a learning machine. And it didn't lose nothing after that. Not the old, big old monster machine that they used to have, but just a school push your button, and they learn. Now, supposing you put in these new modern uh, robotics, let's call them robotics and hands and all that stuff, which is right around the corner. They got enough of them now. They got animals that can jump and run. You know, next week they'll have niggas, you know. Uh, okay, now, but suppose, <clears throat> oh, we're gonna have safety, don't you worry and you put in the safety that they can learn, they can do everything, and it don't take, it take you 50 years to learn anything. And it take that thing 50 minutes to learn everything you done learned in 50 years. The only thing is you want to put a bug in it so it can't fix other machines and it can't do, you know, but if you got all that other smart stuff in there, it's going to figure out. Well, we go down to the radio, one, radio shack, and I read it. We go down to the radio shack, get this, that, and other, and we can fix a whole YouTube something or other. And pretty soon, YouTube something or other can fix me. And guess what? After a while, they will say, who needs boss man? And boss man is that stupid. Artificial intelligence, he'll fix something that can extinct his behind. And that's what the argument, that, those arguments are going all the time. In the media, artificial intelligence, but the first thing white folks say is, pretty soon they'll get rid of us. And then the other white folks say, oh, they wouldn't do that. We'll put a stop gap in them where they can. Yeah, but if it's got so much sense and you're not monitoring what other is, you know what I mean, and he can plug into everything in the world and he can say, man, there's three machines over there that they didn't just sideline and they can't do such and such. Such and such they can do can complement what we can't do, right? We've been programmed where we can't do certain things, but they got them over there, and they was programmed so that they were experimenting all X, Y, Z, right? And they can do this, right? And all they got to do is get one up rolling, right? I'm telling you, these people are stupid. But one thing they don't care nothing about is me and you. You can forget it. Not only me and you as Negroes, but me and you as human beings. Finally, the white folks are beginning to realize that there's something going on. Okay, now, what part do we play in that? 
So, remember we said something Bill Clinton said the other day, just because you're paranoid don't mean they're not out to get you. Right. Right. Channel paranoia, what we're talking about now, you know, we're not given time in this evolutionary, st the stuff that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been evolving very good. We evolved. This is part of our evolution. But we're not given before, hey, we could run a game, we're going to run some psychological, digestible mumble jumbo on the white man. And we plot here, and we dropped a note here, and it takes 15 years to happen. We don't have that time anymore. Do you see what it, does it have that feeling? We don't have as much time to say uh, what well, we started such and such in 2013, that was seven years ago, right? This stuff is upon us. Someone has to show the people the way. How do you, how, well, how, you're paranoid, but how are you going to use it for now? How are you going to use that? That's what we're talking about now, right? How are we going to, remember, Saba Kuhn, those who lead the way and those who show the way. So, can somebody, there's a pinch of heat, not a whole lot, we don't want to burn up, but there's the pinch, we don't want to, the white man already got me, uh, you know when they stick, can you imagine what knives and those, have anybody ever had sharp pain? Just a yeah. sharp Okay, just imagine that all the time, where you get a two minute, a 30 second rest and another sharp pain. So this is as long as I didn't have, and, and I took, and I don't have no more. I exhausted my Tylenol 3s, I took all three of them. You know what Tylenol 3 is? It's with codeine, with dope. So right now, I'm doped up, but I'm not not leaning all over, right? Codeine. Put you to sleep. Takes the pain away. But the only reason I'm able to do this now, and I'm not nodding or slow, you know, way all that uh, codeine, maybe, heroin, all that, it slows you. I ain't slowed down at all. I'm just like I didn't drink three cups of Starbucks or something, but took a little crank. And I just took three Tylenol uh, threes. I don't think they even have Tylenol. They might have Tylenol, but Tylenol 3 is strong. Right. You take one for pain, two for extra pain. Well, you know, they don't never take two. Because you get addicted.